Hey everybody, I've been excited to put a video together about this particular case of Miles and his seizure disorder um, for a couple reasons. Number one, he's had great success. Number two, you know, we are failing our children. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, these We're seeing childhood diseases at a childhood chronic diseases at an alarming rate since the late 80s and um, I, I just, we're, we're failing them. So stick with me for a few minutes. I'm going to show you exactly what we did with Miles, the results he had, and the four things that you should cover with each and every one of these cases. So first off, this is Miles. Miles is 14. I believe, yeah, he's 14. Um, and we'll go through his history, but basically he was having debilitating seizures and he would pass out anytime he got stressed. Uh, in full, spirit of full disclosure, Emily here, his mom, um, she's my cousin, so she is a little bit biased uh, when you hear what she's had to say, uh, but I'm just telling you that. So here is what um, Emily posted on Facebook. She said, for years, they've searched for answers to Miles' health issues, and traditional medicine has provided more questions than solutions, hence we're failing our kids. Upon reaching my breaking point, I finally reached out to my cousin, a brilliant functional neurologist chiropractor in Idaho. Thanks, Emily. That was a little too nice. But uh, Dr. Brady Weirick has helped us look for the underlying root causes of mild symptoms. I won't go into all of it here. For the first time in a long time, I feel optimistic. There are some significant lifestyle changes to be made due to food sensitivities, the gluten and dairy topping the list. That being said, if you had tried and true paleo gluten-free blogs and recipes, please send them to me. I know that those who are skeptical, that is why it took me so long to reach out to, to me. Over the last several years, I have come to realize more and more that our healthcare system is failing us, and I have become more skeptical of traditional medicine. Me too, Emily. It was so refreshing to talk to him about Miles as a whole individual, for a doctor to see him, and all parts of him is interconnected instead of going to 17 different specialists to treat evaluate individual symptoms. I think that's where we fail. I haven't found one traditional medicine doctor save this physical therapist who has done that. I'm so overwhelmed wrapping my brain all around of it, but I'll do anything for my son to be able to live his best life, send prayers. We're all going to need them as we step forward into this new adventure and lifestyle. So with Miles and with any of these kids, um, step one is to actually do a thorough history. Here's a, just a, a hint of what you have to look at. Number one, you got to look at mom's health history. What was her health like before pregnancy? I can tell you that Emily does have some underlying autoimmune conditions, which was the first thing that made me raise my eyebrow. Was there any pregnancy complications or health issues while she was pregnant, such as gestational diabetes? These are important because uh, these, you know, your gut as it's forming, we need to have the most friendly environment for it, uh, for your gut and your brain to, uh, to develop appropriate birth details. Was it C-section or vaginal? That comes down to um, some of the uh, the refluxes that we're going to talk about. Is there any birth trauma? What was the child's vaccina vaccination history? Yes, that is important. If you look at the chronic diseases that are now, if you plot chronic diseases between 1980 for children between 1980 and now, you'll notice in 1989 there's a big spike and it started to shoot up. I'm sure that has nothing to do with vaccinations quadrupling that year. And anyway, I won't go too much into that. Developmental milestones. What was their early development like? Um, what were the first antibiotics and other medications they had? These are important because from the moment you're conceived up until you're about two years old, the right half of your brain is developing. And if there's insult during that time, we're going to have some, um, some deficiencies there that we need to deal with. Next things we've got to do is we've got to rule out food sensitivities. And when I say this, I say don't guess, test, and I'll show you exactly what miles look like. Um, the gluten, top sensitivities are gluten and dairy. You want to look at those. Uh, the other ones are corn and soy. Uh, dietary changes are vitally important in these. Your brain consumes about 20% of whatever you put in your mouth. And if we're not eating foods that are going to help the brain develop normally, then, then you're not going to make progress. So um, request for paleo gluten-free recipes. This is the direction that I, that I put kids in. There's tons of resources out there. Um, I did mean to throw on his test results in here, but we did a test thanks to Rupa Health that um, basically told us that we were indeed dealing with a gluten and dairy sensitivity. It was a blood test from Genova Diagnostics, and we actually it was cool because we could do this uh, before he even got here. I had this tent sent to his house, 
it's a blood blot test. So he pricked his finger and put it blood in several different circles. And we had that information before. They tra- I forgot to mention this. They traveled to Idaho Falls from Colorado Springs. So it was a bit of a journey. Um, step three is to rule out primitive reflexes. The top five of these is to check are the Morrow reflex, the rooting reflex, the Palmer grasp reflex, the Gallant reflex, and the Babinski. Um, there's tons of great resources out there about how to check these. Um, there's some, I know some occupational therapists, speech therapists to do it. Um, we do it as well. It's one of the first things we did. These uh, primitive reflexes are supposed to go away within six months of birth. They're the reflexes that help you survive. And if they don't get overridden by upper level brain function, then the brain's not going to develop normally and you're going to end up with seizure, seizure disorders. In um, Miles' case, it was a palmar grasp reflex and a rooting reflex. So if you touch his cheek um, with a, we were using a Kleenex, his, his lips would still tremble and there's a little bit of that grasp reflex real, um, left. So they've been working on that since they left, um, seeing some progress there. And then neuro rehabilitation is going to come down to the expert that, uh, that you end up seeing. Yes, you can do a big chunk of this yourself, but when it comes down to the neuro rehab part, this is when you need someone who knows what they're doing. My preference is low-level laser therapy. There's tons of research that's backing this up, um, using light to stimulate the brain to, to, um, to grow new nerves, new connections. Um, and there were some other things we did with Miles as well, which were personal to him, so we're not going to get too much into that. But here's an update. As of June 30th, I got this text from Emily. So our diet changing is helping. Miles only passed out, had a seizure once at youth camp. That's pretty remarkable. And it was the end of a really busy, long, hot day where he was super active and didn't drink enough water. Um, So he is making some massive progress. Here's a couple more texts um, that I got this morning. I've been chatting with Emily. Um, It hasn't just helped with seizures, but the fatigue, the brain fog, the neurological pain, uh, which is why I lean more towards functional neurological diagnosis or deficits. That's FND. Um, although I joke with him that I am going to put him back on gluten because he becomes a sassy teenager. When they start becoming a sassy teenager, we know we're on the right path. So that is his story. If you need more than a mom's intuition, well, I don't know what to tell you because moms, you know, you ladies, um, your intuition is worth more than any professional or medical degree. But if you need more, you can screenshot this. There are some studies that I threw up here as well. Uh, but if you can help, with, if you need help with this, please feel free to reach out. Please comment, like, and ask questions below. Happy to answer them best I can. But that's Miles' case, and um, for Emily and her family, this is huge. So thanks for spending a few minutes with me. Uh, we'll do some more case reviews later. Thank you.